Hello everybody and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, June the 17th and time once again for the mailbag. I hope you guys have had a great week and a great weekend. My week was really good, super busy. Kind of a lot going on in sort of like the old, you know, personal life as it were. Um, but pretty exciting things. I had to go into Austin for a couple of days uh, this week and then come back. So uh, I was on the road quite a lot, didn't have as much time here at the house and the library and the studios I would have liked. Uh, but uh, there are things sort of are, are moving, as it were, and it kind of required my attention. But I'm glad to be back here. We have, especially after last, last week's two-week blowout, that 43 minutes, was it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, you know, all the long videos do really good business, do really good views. So I guess you guys don't mind them, but uh, at least I have a good new mic. So, you know, I'm not going to have mic problems causing me to have to do that again. But we are back with, again, I think a decent average week in the mailbag. This time looks to be maybe about eight-ish or so packages. So we're going to go ahead and dig right in and see what we have, all right? And we're going to start right here with this really pretty, very shiny uh, gold package from the Hatchet Group. No idea what this is, so I hope I can open it. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, this is <laughs> very shiny indeed. This is the new trade paperback edition of The Sisters of the Winter Wood, a fantasy debut by Rena Rossner, which I got in hardcover, regrettably have not managed to get on the, uh, the TBR pile just yet. I should accelerate that, but this one is really, the original one, the hardcover came packaged with like all this extra sort of frou-frou stuff, which is like feathers and little gold cutouts of things, and you know, it was all very pretty, and this one now has this uh, lovely golden bow, and uh, this actual, this handwritten message from the uh, publicist uh, saying, thank you for championing, championing the Sisters of the Winter Wood, enjoy the shiny paperback, and this is, she actually hand drew this little bear on here. I had no idea that you had this uh, you had this much talent, Paula. I'm very impressed. So yeah, so I got a hand-drawn bear and uh, the new uh, shiny wrapped up in a bow paperback of Sisters of the Winter. Well, I guess I should go ahead and just like, you know, not assume you know what it's about uh, and read the back here. In a remote village surrounded by vast forests, Liba and Leia, or Liba and Leia, have been raised on the honeyed scent of their mummies, Bobka and the low rumble of their Tati's prayers. But when dark forces threaten their village, the sisters discover a family secret passed down through generations. Faced with a magical heritage they never knew existed, Liba and Leia realize the old fairy tales are true and could save them all. And uh, a lot of the, uh, the lore here comes from like actual you know, Jewish mythology, uh, legends, you know, folk tales, Jewish folk tales. And what is interesting is that the... Um, point of view from the two sisters. One sister, her chapters are all written in standard prose, and then the other sister's chapters are written in verse. So that's kind of interesting. But anyway, Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rossner is available, I guess, now-ish in trade paperback. Ah, that was indeed shiny. Okay, this one, slightly less shiny, but uh, no less worthwhile, is in from Harper Collins. Okay, and this is the finished hardcover copy of uh, The Brink. Uh, the authors are James Murray and Darren Wermuth. And this is uh, the sequel to a book called Awakened, which is basically, you know, a, a, a monster story, right? You know, we've dug a brand new subway and it has uncovered, uh, you know, horrible monsters, subterranean monsters who are now, you know, bursting forth and attacking us all and you know, that sort of thing. And uh, James Murray, better known as Murr of True TV's immensely popular Impractical Jokers program, which I don't watch, and veteran sci-fi and horror writer Darren Wermuth return to the Awakened series. Brand new novel of chilling horror. Okay. Uh, Murr and Wermuth continue to pull out all the stops. Facebook Live events, bookstore, that just talks about their promotional efforts. Okay. Well, it's called The Brink. It's full of monsters doing monster things, and uh, it is available in hardcover. Why do you guys always hide the dates? Oh, tomorrow on the uh, 18th. And this next one is from Random Penguin. Okay, you guys, this is one that ever since I first heard of it a couple of months ago, I have been itching to get my mitts on this one uh, because this is something that I always want to see more of and I'm thrilled to death when it turns up. It is space opera horror. Very much my jam. Okay, this is a book called Salvaged. All right, uh, this is coming out from Ace in trade paperback on October the 15th. The author is Madeline Rue. Okay, and it's uh, 
described by Shannon McGuire, no less, as the prose equivalent of playing a survival horror game. So this is definitely going to be part of my uh, 12 Days of Halloween coverage, uh, almost definitely, okay? Goes like this, Rosalind DeVar is a space janitor who's made too many mistakes on the job. Her boss gives her one last opportunity, salvage the brigantine, a research ship that has gone dark, the crew deceased. But when Rosalind arrives on the ship, see, ship's gone dark, it's just out there floating in space. What could go wrong, right? That's just always going to be a great setup. She finds the crew very much alive, just not entirely human. Each crew member is controlled in different ways by a parasite that calls itself Mother and feeds on each of their memories about their own mother. Some have been able to resist it, some have succumbed totally. To survive the ship, Rosalind will have to rely on the help of the few crewmates who have been able to maintain some control over Mother. Can they be trusted? Throughout the plot, Rosalind's personal story develops. Readers quickly learn she has secrets of her own and a past she is desperate to escape. With Rosalind's story, Salvage becomes more than a thrilling adventure. It is also a moving and thoughtful examination of the scars of trauma and addiction. Wow. All right, so it comes out October the 15th. Sounds like, you know, it's maybe got a bit of the thing influence there, you know, with the parasite sort of taking... doesn't replicate you, but it kind of like takes your mind over. And uh, so, okay, all right then. Looking forward to this. As I said, October... The 15th. And next up we have from Rachel Kane, also from Random Penguin. This is Sword and Pen. And this is going to be the fifth and final volume uh, in her Great Library series, which started with Ink and Bone in 2015. And uh, now it's uh, wrapping up with uh, five books total. This comes out September the 3rd. And the Great Library is series, which, which is YA is a thrilling alternate history that reimagines a world where the Great Library of Alexandria has survived the ages and become a vast network of information. In this imaginative world, alchemy allows for the greatest works to be delivered on command but at a price. The personal ownership of books has been outlawed. In Sword and Pen, the corrupt leadership of the Great Library has fallen, but with the library under siege from outside empires and kingdoms, its future is uncertain. Jess Brightwell and his friends must come together as never before to forge a new future for the Great Library or see everything it stood for crumble. Okay then, so the culmination of this series on September the 3rd by Rachel Kane. Okay, so next up, and I think both from Random Penguin, I have uh, a couple of boxes that are about this size. So it uh, looks like we have some thick arrivals. Let's see what they are. Okay, turns out I was wrong about both of them being from Random Penguin. Uh, this one is from Tor. And this is a uh, new hardcover fantasy from Kevin J. Anderson, which I believe is already out in uh, bookshops. Yeah, this one came out uh, June the 4th. It's called Spine of the Dragon. Okay. And it goes like this. It's a politically charged adventure of sword, sorcery, vengeance, and the rise of sleeping giants. All right, then. Two continents at war, the Three Kingdoms and Ishara, are divided by past bloodshed. When an outside threat arises, the reawakening of powerful ancient race... What is wrong with me? I can't talk today. The reawakening of a powerful ancient race... There it is, Thomas. God, speak English. It's your native language. Uh, that wants to remake the world. Uh, two warring nations must somehow set aside generational hatreds and form an alliance to fight their true enemy. Okay, well, who would that be? Uh, it doesn't say. Okay, I guess so we have to read the book to find out. But, uh, you know, Robin Hobb seems to like it. Ari Salvatore, folks like that. So, okay, Spine of the Dragon uh, from Tor Books and Hardcover. Now available. Okay, so this is the box that is definitely Random Penguin because I see a little penguin on it. So that, that tends to be a giveaway. Okay, and the next one here is Ambitious and Massive. And uh, I have been seeing... I was curious that I didn't get an arc for this, but, uh, you know, because I usually do from Delray Books. But that's okay. Uh, this is a new book called Wanderers. It's by Chuck Wendig. Uh, it is on sale July the 2nd, and my god, it is a big one, like 780 pages. Uh, let's see what it says about, let's see, Option for TV by the producers behind Get Out and Black Klansman. Wendig takes us on a journey, starting in Pennsylvania and ending in the complete collapse of society, where we are confronted with the best and worst parts of humanity. All right, so apocalyptic novel. 
Uh, Shanna wakes up one morning to discover her little sister in the grip of a strange malady. She appears to be sleepwalking. She cannot talk and cannot be woken up. And she is heading with inexorable determination to a destination that only she knows. But Shanna and her sister are not alone. Soon they are joined by a flock of sleepwalkers from across America on the same mysterious journey. And, like Shanna, there are other quote-unquote shepherds who follow the flock to protect their friends and family on the long, dark road ahead. Okay, that's interesting. For on their journey, they will discover an America convulsed with terror and violence, where this apocalyptic epidemic proves less dangerous than the fear of it. As the rest of society collapses all around them, and an ultra-violent militia threatens to exterminate them, the fate of the sleepwalkers determines on unraveling, depends, excuse me, on unraveling the mystery behind the epidemic. The terrifying secret will either tear the nation apart or bring the survivors together to remake a shattered world. Okay then, so looks like this is Chuck Wendig taking his stab at, uh, you know, the, the big apocalyptic novel, right? Like The Stand or a Swan Song, books like that. Uh, but this is available from Delray Books on July the 2nd. Let me know in the comments. And if nothing else, you can wait for the TV show. Okay, so now I have uh, three little white envelopes in a row, usually denoting definitely uh, Macmillan titles, some of them tour titles, I'm sure. And Thomas is a happy Thomas. This is the arc for The Future of Another Timeline, uh, the new novel by Annalee Newitz, who wrote Autonomous, Really kind of, you know, exciting example of late cyberpunk that came out a couple of years ago. And uh, a bleak and, uh, you know, rough and tough book, but exactly in the way it should have been. I enjoyed that one enormously. And so now The Future of Another Timeline comes out September the 24th. And it goes like this. This dark thriller is set in a modern day United States, much like our own, but with one key difference. Time travel has existed for as long as humanity itself. Jumping into the past is simple, and most believe that history cannot be changed. But Tess, a geologist and traveler, is desperate to undo a horrible past injustice, whose effects are both personal and political. Meanwhile in, meanwhile in 1992, meanwhile back in the past, teenage riot girl Beth's ordinary life is about to become a tangle of toxic friendship and murder. And across the timeline, a war is brewing as a group of men attempt to permanently alter the timeline and destroy time travel itself. If they succeed, only a small elite will have the power to shape past, present, and future. A final confrontation is coming. Our only hope lies with an unlikely group of allies from times past and times yet to come. Battling for a world where anyone can change the future. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm all about this. Uh, this comes out. September the 24th, from Tor Books, The Future of Another Timeline. And next in from Tor, we have in hardcover, The Red Stained Wings. Uh, this is by Elizabeth Bear. Uh, this came out on the 28th of May. And uh, this is the second book in her Lotus Kingdoms trilogy. This trilogy is a sequel trilogy to an earlier trilogy called the Eternal Sky Trilogy, although I don't know that you have to have read them all in sequence. I mean, it's it's set in the same universe, apparently expands upon that universe. Um, that that The Eternal Sky Trilogy, that trilogy began with a book called Range of Ghosts, and uh, that was very, very highly acclaimed for her, and so this is a new trilogy in the same universe. Like I say, don't know if you have to have read all of them in order to catch up here, but of course... If you want to read all of them, then that's just more good books to read, right? So, but anyway, uh, The Red Stained Wings, a sequel to The Stone in the Skull, is now available in hardcover from Tor. And the third of the White Macmillan envelopes, let's see what this one is. Oh, this is great fun, although this, this art doesn't have the actual finished cover that will appear on the book on it, uh, but they still made it look uh, fun anyway. This is a book called The Saul Majestic. Uh, it's, well, apparently it's already out. But they sent me an arc and not the final. Oh, that's fine. All right. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, this came out June the 11th, The Saul Majestic. And it's a big-hearted intergalactic adventure for fans of Becky Chambers. So again, another one of those, right? You know, the light-hearted space opera romp. Ferret Steinmetz is the author. Utterly charming standalone summer read combines optimism, food, and space adventure in The Saul Majestic. Kenna, an aspirational teen guru, wanders destitute across the stars as he tries to achieve his parents' ambition to advise the celestial elite. 
Everything changes when Kenna wins a free dinner at the Sol Majestic, the galaxy's most renowned restaurant, giving him access to the cosmos's 1%. His dream is jeopardized, however, when he learns his highly publicized free meal risks putting the Saul Majestic into financial ruin. Kenna and a motley gang of newfound friends, including a teleporting celebrity chef, a trust fund adrenaline junkie, an inept apprentice, and a brilliant mistress of disguise, must concoct an extravagant scheme to save everything they cherish. In doing so, Kenna may sacrifice his ideals or learn even greater lessons about wisdom, friendship, and love. And it all happens in the Sol Majestic. Available now from Tor Books. Last package of the week, and this comes in from Random Penguin. Okay, well, we're going to wrap up with uh, something for the Stranger Things fans. Uh, this is a tie-in novel by Brenna Yovanoff. It's called Runaway Max. And uh, it says, okay, well, this, this has come out. This has been out since June the 4th. And it says ages 12 plus, so it looks like this is actually not a YA, but a middle grade Stranger Things novel. Uh, a gripping emotional prequel to the hit Netflix series, publishing one month prior to the eagerly awaited July 4th release of season 3. This unmissable untold story follows the beloved Dig Dug maven Max Mayfield through the events leading up to her entry into the series. Uh, Jovanov's story explores Max's past, the good and the bad, as well as how she comes to find her new sense of home in Hawkins, Indiana. Okay. All right, then. So for the younger readers, um, you know, and I'm sure there are many because, you know, all those awesome kids and Stranger Things, uh, this is now available from Random House in hardcover, Runaway Max. And there we have it. That's what I've got for the mailbag this week. Pretty good haul, I will say. Small, of course, or just average sized, an average week in terms of volume. But there were some things in this one that I am really excited about. Quite a few things, in fact. So um, strong overall in terms of content, I would have to say. You guys know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you and which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, as always, if you enjoyed watching, hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please sub. If you haven't done so, that is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army get little perks like getting to see my videos early. I want to thank those people for their additional support. Patreon is a big help if you've got two bucks a month. What I use it for is to pay for my thumbnails, my wonderful thumbnails by the multi-talented Matt Olson that have... Uh, graced my channel for five plus years now, and I'm very, very lucky to have him as a collaborator. So that's really what I use the Patreon for, <laughs> and it's a big help. So uh, I want to thank those people for their additional support. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube, and until I see all of you next time, happy reading. <laughs>